Perfect. All right, sorry about the delay. We've had a good turnout. We need to make some more copies. We've got some new voters that we've registered, so we are ready to get started. Looks like about 10 after 7. So Town of Acton Maine School Budget FY 2018-2019 Special Town Meeting Warrant to Robert Anderson, a constable in the Town of Acton. Greetings to the voters of the Town of Acton. In the name of the State of Maine, you are hereby requested to notify and warn the inhabitants of said Town of Acton qualified to vote in town affairs to assemble at the Acton Elementary School, 700 Milton Mills Road, on April 3rd, 2018, at 7 o'clock in the evening, to act on the following articles. Article 1 is to choose a moderator. This was posted by our constable at all six required places on March 21st. Nominations for moderator are open. Stand and state your name and announce your nomination. Mary Stanton, I'd like to nominate Richard Nass as moderator. Richard Nass has been nominated moderator, has been seconded. Are there any other nominations for moderator? Seeing none, we're going to vote on a moderator. We do have to have a minimum of three written ballots to vote on moderator. If anybody else wants to vote, raise your hand and I'll bring you a ballot. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Richard Nass, yes. do swear yes. that I support the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the United States. and of the state, state, so long as I shall continue as citizen thereof. I, Richard Nass, do swear that I will faithfully discharge, to the best of my abilities, the duties incumbent upon me as a moderator for the special town meeting April 3rd, 2018. According to the Constitution and laws of the state of Maine. Constitution and laws of the state of Maine. Very good. Signature here. Good evening. Thank you for attending. What a great turnout for the school committee meeting. So, as usual, we will conduct this meeting according to the guidance and the rules of the main moderator's manual, unless there's objection. Does anybody have a better set of rules they want to talk to? Okay, so main moderator's rules are what we're going to work with. Uh, I think the first order of business is, let's do a salute to the flag, which is up there. Everybody will stand up. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, in His will, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay, when you came in, you all got a yellow uh, ballot, it's not a ballot, it's a voter thing. If, if we vote the article today, you're going to need to hold this up. This is your ticket to vote. Later on, on Article 14, it's, we need a written ballot, so you've all got this little white piece of paper, a yes or no on that one. When we get to that, we'll talk about it. You should all have that. Uh, we have likely have some non-residents who may uh, need to talk tonight. In order to do that, we need a approval of the meeting or and that's assumed to be a two-thirds vote so the people who likely will talk or may talk tonight are john ross who's the superintendent of schools john is over here in the red shirt kim oliver kim i think i saw kim today there she's in the back she's the finance director for the school district our town clerk jennifer Rue. Where's her job here? okay so those three people who are non-residents may need to speak tonight. They don't necessarily have to, but they may. 
So is there objection to those folks talking? If it should be necessary. Seeing none, we'll assume we have the approval of the meeting. Okay, I see Mr. Gore has his hand up. Okay, so as we get going through the articles, if somebody wants to comment or have a discussion about any of the articles, we have the two mics up here. We'll need to come up to the front. You can't do anything by shouting out uh, motions or whatever. You need to come up and make the motions or have the discussion. Okay, moving to Article 2. See what's up the town of Acton will authorize the school committee to expend for regular instruction. The school committee recommends to expend $2,743,537 for regular instruction. The Warren Finance Committee recommends uh, the same. Is there a motion on Article 2? Judy. I make a motion that we accept the school committee's recommendation. Okay. It's been moved and seconded to adopt the school committee's recommendation on Article 2, which is to expend. $2,743,537. Are there questions or comments on Article 2? There. I'll second the motion. Didn't we get a second already? Yes, I don't yeah, think we'll 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 Ah, okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no shouting from the floor. How about if we make an exception for seconds there? <laughs> is, is anybody object to that? <laughs> okay, so we're open for comments or questions on Article 2. See none. The motion is to, I assume that we, Dr. Williams, you're not desired to speak on this? Uh, the Warren Finance Committee has one negative vote, and that was primarily because of terminology. Uh, the verb expend uh, was felt it was more appropriate to use appropriate. That's the only comment as far as the actual need of the, of the article that was the profession. Dr. I'm a no vote, and I'm on no vote on two through 12 one no vote, and precisely because of terminology. Um, I would prefer not to see the term expend in there because I'm not sure what it means in terms of the town meeting. I would, pro I would appreciate uh, inserting the term appropriate. Appropriate has a very special meaning in the context of our town meeting. And I'm gonna look at my notes, but when we appropriate we authorize the selectmen to expend municipal funds up to the limit specified in the article for the purpose specified in the article in the term of the, um, the fiscal year in which the vote is taken. Okay? So it does four things that, that the term appropriate means. I don't know what expend means. The words matter. I think words do matter. We might be a lawyer at some point in time to find the term expense if we continue to be included in here. But why am I concerned? I've been a member of this town meeting for going on 45 years now. Many of those years I have spent as either an officer or an official of this town meeting. I thought I knew what the term reserve accounts meant. So this is a classic example of why words matter. The school committee has an attorney that is telling Warren Finance, no, you don't know what the term reserve means, okay? Um, they, the attorney says that the school committee can create a reserve account, never has to come back before the town meeting either to carry it or to actually spend the funds in that account. And we'll talk more about those specific accounts a little bit later. The uh, Warren Finance Committee spent six months looking very, very hard, they worked very hard, looking at these reserve accounts, and determined by a vote of five to one that those accounts lapsed in, on June 30th, uh, 2016. The school committee says no, and the attorney says no. They lapsed either. But if you read the seven-page opinion from the attorney very carefully, he says his opinion is not without doubt, and he repeats that in several places. Well, that legal terminology, or it's a legal way of saying, there is considerable reason to doubt the opinion. But nobody's asked the question, one of those reasons, and the attorney did not include those reasons in the opinion 
that he prepared for the school. I guess I prefer to use words about prefer to use words about which there is no doubt. And appropriate is a term about which there is no doubt. Expend is a term about which there is doubt. Okay. Just adds the confusion to not use proper terminology as it's understood by the town meeting. Thank you, Mr. Potter. Thank you. Other questions or comments on Article 2? I, I would just like to comment that sure. our articles were designed uh, and set up according to uh, what the state requires for school systems. And if you look at uh, if you look at warrants of other school systems in the area around which we did, etc., you will find that they also use the word expend. Additional comments, Mr. Bureau. I'm going to read from the law. There's a cutout for the town meetings. Here it is. Budget format, town meeting. When the final budget authority is vested in a town meeting operating under the general enabling procedures of Title 30A, the format of the school budget may be determined by the town meeting or under the procedures of Title 30A. That's the law. They will carve out the town meeting. Judy is correct. Oh, excuse me. Madam Chairman is correct that under certain circumstances, for regional school units, you have to use that terminology. But the legislature has enabled the town meeting to use its terminology in a consistent manner as provided in Title 13. Additional comments or questions on Article 2? Mr. Waterhouse. Well, Waterhouse, you call the question, please. Okay, if there's no more uh, questions or comments, uh, we're just gonna, we're gonna, I assume this is gonna be okay, but we're gonna vote on it now, okay? What he did was make a motion to uh, move the question or call the question, which usually needs to be voted on. We don't need to do that because we're about to vote. I think, Judy, you gonna comment anymore? No. Okay, the motion on Article 2 is to adopt the motion as recommended by the school committee, which is to expend Two million seven hundred forty-three thousand five hundred thirty-seven dollars. All those in favor of the motion, please hold up your yellow cards. Thank you. Hands down. Those opposed. Article two is adopted as recommended by the school committee. Article three. To see what some of the town of Acton will authorize the school committee to expend for special education. The school committee recommends to expend one million thirty-five thousand five hundred fifty-one dollars. Warren Finance Committee recommends the same one million thirty-five thousand five hundred and fifty-one dollars. Judy, do you have a motion? I make a motion that we accept the school committee's recommendation for Article Three. It's been moved and seconded by Mary to adopt the school committee's recommendation on Article Three. Are there questions or comments on Article Three? Seeing none, the motion is to adopt Article Three as recommended by the school committee. All those in favor of the motion. Please raise your yellow cards. Thank you. Hands down as opposed. Article 3 is adopted as recommended by the school committee, which is to expend $1,035,551. Article 4, to see what some of the town of Acton will authorize the school committee to expend for career or technical education. The school committee recommends to expend $0. Judy? I make a motion that we accept the school committee's recommendation. The move is seconded to to adopt the school committee's recommend, recommendation, which is to expend zero dollars. Just by way of explanation, we, we have always two, not always, but we have currently two that have raised zero dollars. That's because the state has mandated basically what articles we vote on. So we are following the format. So even though we don't expend anything, we, we see these articles every year. And that particular article uh, refers to secondary education. So, which we don't provide. Okay, uh, any other comments or questions on Article 4? Seeing none, the motion is to adopt Article 4 as recommended by the school committee, which is to expend zero dollars. All those in favor of the motion, please raise your yellow cards. Thank you. Hands down. Those opposed? Article 4 is adopted as recommended by the school committee. Article 5, to see what some of the town of Acton will authorize the school committee to expend for other instruction. School committee recommends to expend $50,400 for other instruction. Warren Finance Committee has the same recommendation, $50,400. Is there a motion on Article 5? 
I make a motion that we accept the school committee's recommendation for Article 5. It's been moved and seconded to adopt the school committee's recommendation on Article 5. Are there questions or comments on Article 5? Seeing on the motion is to adopt Article 5 as recommended by the school committee, which is to expend $50,400. All those in favor of the motion, please raise your yellow cards. Shake your hands down those opposed. Article 5 is adopted as recommended by the school committee. Article 6, to see what's on the town of Acton will authorize the school committee to expend for student and staff support. School committee recommends to expend $527,043 for student and staff support. Is there a motion on Article 6? Excuse me. I make the motion that we accept the school committee's recommendation for Article 6. Okay. It's been moved and seconded by Mary to adopt the school committee's recommendation, which is to expend $527,043 for student and staff support. Are there questions and comment or comments on Article 6? Seeing on the motion is to adopt Article 6 as recommended by the school committee. All those in favor of the motion, please raise your yellow cards. Thank you, hands down. Those opposed? Article 6 is adopted as recommended by the school committee. Article 7, to see what's on the town of Acton will authorize the school committee to expend for assistant administration. The school committee recommends to expend $213,828 for assistant administration. The Home Finance Committee recommends the same. Do you have a motion? I make a motion we accept the school committee's recommendation for Article 7. It's been moved and seconded by Mary to adopt Article 7 as recommended by the school committee. Are there questions or comments on Article 7? Seeing none, the motion on Article 7 is to adopt the article as recommended by the school committee. All those in favor of the motion, please raise your yellow cards. Make your hands down those opposed. Article 7 is adopted as recommended by the school committee, which is to expend $213,828. Article 8, to see what some of the town will authorize the school committee to expend for school administration. The school committee recommends to expend $128,074 for school administration. We have a motion, Judy? I make a motion we accept the school committee's recommendation for Article 8. The move and seconded by Mary to adopt the school committee's recommendation, which is to expend $128,074 for uh, school administration. Are there questions or comments on Article 8? Seeing none, the motion is to adopt Article 8 as recommended by the school committee. All those in favor of the motion, please raise your cards. Thank you. Hands down, those opposed. Article 8 is adopted as recommended by the school committee. Article 9, to see what's on the town of Acton will authorize the school committee to expand for student transportation. The school committee recommends to expend $297,000 for school transportation. The Warren Finance Committee recommends the same. Judy? I make a motion that we accept the school committee's recommendation for Article 9. Second. The move and seconded by Mary to adopt the school committee's recommendation on Article 9. Are there questions or comments on Article 9? Seeing none, the motion is to adopt Article 9 as recommended by the school committee. All those in favor of the motion, please raise your cards. Thank you. Hands down those opposed. Article 9 is adopted as recommended by the school committee. Article 10. See what some of the town of Acton will authorize the school committee to expend for facilities maintenance. The school committee recommends to expend $460,224 for facility maintenance. Board the Finance Committee recommends the same. Judy? I make a motion that we accept the School Committee's recommendation for Article 10. It's been moved and seconded to adopt Article 10 as recommended by the School Committee. Does anybody have comments or questions on Article 10? This is getting boring up here. I forget what I have to do next. Yeah. <laughs> keep going. Keep going. Jeanette says keep going. All right. The uh, motion on Article 10 is to adopt this, the school committee's recommendation, which is to expend $460,224. All those in favor of the motion, please raise your cards. Thank you. Hands down those opposed. Article 10 is adopted as recommended by the school committee. Article 11. See what's up the town of Acton will authorize the school committee to expend for debt service and other commitments. School committee recommends zero dollars for debt service. Warrant Finance Committee is the same. 
Judy, motion. I recommend, I make a motion that we take the school committee's recommendation to expend zero for debt service with gratitude that we don't have any debt. <laughs> That's not part of the motion. Oh. No gratitude. <laughs> Seconded by Mary. The motion on Article 11 is to adopt the school committee's recommendation, which is to expend zero dollars. Does anybody have any questions or comments on Article 11? Seeing none, the motion is to adopt the school committee's recommendation. All those in favor of the motion, please raise your cards. If you can down those opposed. Article 11 is adopted as recommended by the school committee. Article 12, the seal of the town of Acton will authorize the school committee to expend for all other expenditures, including nutrition. School committee recommends to expend $143,461 for all other expenditures, including nutrition. Warren Finance Committee recommends the same. Is there a motion, Judy? I make a motion we accept the school committee's recommendation for Article 12. It's been moved and seconded by Mary to adopt the school committee's recommendation on Article 12. Are there questions or comments on Article 12? Seeing none, the motion is to adopt Article 12 as recommended by the school committee. All those in favor of the motion, please raise your cards. If you hands down, those opposed. Article 12 is adopted as recommended by the school committee. Article 13 and 14 are different. We're now switching into articles that raise funds for the proposed school district. Article 13, to see what Southern Municipality will appropriate for the total cost of funding public education from pre-kindergarten to grade 12, as described in the Essential Programs and Services Funding Act, $3,655,151.39, and to see what sum the municipality will raise as a municipality's contribution to the total cost of funding public education from pre-kindergarten to grade 12, as described in the Essential Programs and Services Funding Act, which is $3,253,254,070 dollars and 74 cents. Let's do that again. Three million two hundred and three thousand two hundred and fifty four dollars and seventy four cents in accordance with the main device statutes title 28 section 15688. School committee recommends to appropriate three million six hundred fifty five thousand one hundred fifty one dollars and thirty nine cents for the total cost of funding public education for pre-kindergarten to grade 12 and to raise $3,203,254.74 as the municipality's contribution to the total cost of funding public education from pre-kindergarten to grade 12. And then there's uh, a little chart here, which is, I don't really think is part of the article, but essentially it uh, replicates those numbers that we just talked about. The Warren Finance Committee recommend is the recommendation is the same on this one. Uh, and then there's an explanation, so we need a motion. Judy, on Article 13. I make a motion that we accept the school committee's recommendation for Article 13. Second. Removed and seconded to adopt the school committee's recommendation on Article 13. Are there questions or comments? Just one comment, yes, um, and that is that the explanation that we were given about the word appropriate is that <coughs> this is where appropriate comes in. It's a, it summarizes the articles that have, we've been given permission to expend from for, for each article for each line item but when we get to 13 and 14 we are actually appropriating the money that we have agreed on. I go. I agree with what you are saying. That is where it's appropriate and but there's a there's there's an issue there that's raised I think the issue has been dealt with. The and this is why I did not make a motion on Articles 2 through 12, because in order to uh, eliminate the term appropriation in that article, what we would do is insert the terminology, appropriate the sum of the funds appropriated in Articles 2 through 12. That would, that would replace the term appropriation in Article 2 through Other comments or questions on Article 13? Seeing none, the motion is to adopt Article 13 as recommended by the school committee. All those in favor of the motion, please raise your hands. Make your hands down those opposed. Article 13 is adopted as recommended by the school committee. Article 14, and this is the one uh, that we need a written ballot on. So 
We're going to read the article, get the motions, entertain any discussion. And we ask you to mark your ballot. This is a little white piece of paper, yes or no. Uh, and bring it up to the front. When you come up to the front to drop it in the box, you're going to need to bring your yellow card. No card, no vote. So don't leave it in your chair, otherwise you're not going to get a chance to vote. Okay? Article 14. To see what some of the municipalities will raise and appropriate in additional local funds. And it's recommended that the amount be $1,708,965.65 that exceeds the state's essential programs and services allocation model by, and the recommended amount is the same, $1,708,000. $965.65 is required to fund the budget recommended by the school committee. And again, all of the stuff that's below that I don't think is part of the article. It's just information. So we have that recommendation from the school committee. Uh, well, I guess that's the article, excuse me. The recommendation from the school committee is to raise and appropriate the amount we've been talking about, $1,708,000. $965.65 for additional local funds and gives the following reasons for exceeding the state's essential programs and services allocation model by that amount of money, $1,708,965.65. The essential programs and services allocation model does not fully support all of the costs of a pre-K to 12 program. These funds support programming not included in the essential programs and services model, including items such as transportation, nutrition, and other education and support services. The more finance uh, response or motion or recommendation is the same. Judy, motion on Article 14. I make the motion that we accept the school committee's recommendation to raise and appropriate $1,708,965.65 for additional local funds. Second. It's been moved and seconded to adopt the school committee's recommendation on Article 14. Are there questions or comments on Article 14? Bob. You do. We'd love to have you right up here, Bob. <laughs> I'm curious to know why there's listed a uh, superintendent's salary and a principal's salary in the budget. Okay, the reason for that is that um, the state requires us, we have, a, we have a combination superintendent and principal. And the state requires in a budgeting process that you have to figure out which part of the job goes with which, and we have to divide the salaries and the benefits between those two positions. It's a, something that the so state... So they get both salaries? They get the principal salary and the superintendent's salary that I'm seeing in the budget? That's correct. Plus the benefits that are included with that? That's correct. Okay, thank you. Other questions or comments on Article 14? Dr. Williams? No? Okay. So uh, we're now going to vote again. You need to put yes or no on the motion, which is to adopt the school committee's recommendation. Yes or no, you need to come up, see Jennifer, put your vote in the box.
everybody vote once the vote? Yeah. 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 Last call on votes. Everybody voted that wants to vote on Article 14. Okay. Oh, she says I can tell a joke or something. I don't have any. Who are We're waiting. We need to wait and get the results of this before we go on. Announcements. Anybody have any announcements? Nomination papers for selecting are due. Public hearing and liquor license next week. Just one comment in regards yes. to. Um, this is a general comment. Yeah, in, in regards to um, the question asked before, I just want to point of clarification. The superintendent principal does not receive two salaries. He receives a single salary that's apportioned out across two cost goes because the state requires it. So I want to be clear there's no two salaries, there's just one. Thank you. Thank you. So counting votes here. I hope everybody's read the marijuana committee report that's online. <laughs> okay, so the active the group from the active school is going to Odyssey of the Mind. States, yes, is that correct? So we, there is some bottles up at the town hall. There's some clink bags up at the town hall. You can donate your empty containers for their benefit. Do you know something about that? Announcement? Sure, this is a good time for it. Hi, um, I'm part of the parent-teacher group here at the school. Um, I just wanted to remind everyone that the Acton Variety Show is coming up on April 28th. It's a Saturday, and we are still accepting acts. Anyone, any age can come and do an act. Um, the deadline for registering is this Friday, so please, you can go online to the school's website um, and find information about that, or you can get in touch with the school at the office or with any of us at the PTG. And we are still accepting sponsorships and um, donations for the raffle, so please help out and please come. It's at 7 o'clock, is that right now? Yeah, 7 o'clock. Thank you. Other questions or comments about that? Sarah, you're next with announcements. This is announcements. Okay, this is not part of the meeting. It's announcements. Random announcements. So, uh, the Acton Republican Committee meets the second Monday of every month at the Town Hall. Uh, it's always a good time. We like to talk and uh, do some business. It, we meet at 6.30. So, second Monday of the month, Town Hall, 6.30 p.m. Thanks. Additional announcements. Anybody else have something they'd like to announce? This is a bigger break than normal. We have so many people here. <laughs> Elise has an announcement. Yeah. Elise. Elise. The public hearing for um, Iron Tail, uh, Iron Tail's liquor license is Tuesday, April 10th at 5 p.m. How about the Metrocast thing? Is that when's that going? Have you have you done you finished with that? The contract. Yeah, we've already signed the contract for Metrocast, which is now Atlantic Broadband. If you have any issues with your Metrocast in the meantime, there is a number um, and a name you can call Ed, Ed Morrill or Merrill. But I don't have his number here, but if you want to email me or call the town, we'll get that for you. Ten, ten year contract, how much? Yeah, it's a ten year contract with the Acton. Yeah, the, the contract was just with the Acton Public Access Television Channel. Yeah. Um, ten year contract and so on your bill your the franchise fee on the bottom is four and a half percent instead of five this year. Was that four and a half percent? So it's going down. So it went down. 
for you. Yes. The more service you have, the more you get. There's no good answer to that. Anybody else have announcements? Yes. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, those of you who know about the, the free Monday movie nights that we had last summer um, up at the church, um, we're going to be having a free um, Monday movie night on uh, the Monday of April vacation. So that is, I think, the 16th, April 16th at 7 o'clock. The reason it's happening up at church is because that is the cheapest um, membership that I could get to show movies to the public. Um, so it has to stay in the in the church um, building. It's not a church run event, I promise. It's a public uh, movie, free movie uh, for all kids and adults if you'd like to join us on April 16th at 7 o'clock. And throughout the summer, through July and August, we'll have free movie nights as well, every Monday night at 7 o'clock. No, again, it's not a, a church um, event at all. It's just a place to have a fun Moving. Thank you. Other announcements? Yes. The library um, has partnered has partnered with the Gaffney Library in Wakefield and Awa, Acton Wakefield Watershed Alliance, to host a water talk series in April 18th. I believe that's a Wednesday at 2 to 4, or 2 to 4-ish at the Action Town Hall, we'll be talking about the American Eel. Um, it'll be interesting, it's our most fascinating fish, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the results of Article 14. 50 yes, 14 no. So Article 14 is adopted as recommended by the school committee. Article 15, we now switch to summary type articles. Article 15, to see what Southern Town of Acton will authorize the school committee to expend for fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2018 and ending June 30th, 2019, from the school department's contribution to the total cost of funding public education from pre-kindergarten to grade 12, as described in the Essential Programs and Services Funding Act, non-state funded school construction projects, additional local funds for school purposes under the main revised statutes, Title 28, Section 15690, unexpended balances, tuition receipts, state subsidy, and other receipts for the support of schools. School committee recommends to expend $5,599,117 for the fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2018 and ending June 30th, 2019 from the school department's contribution to the total cost of funding public education from grades pre-kindergarten to grade 12. The Warren Finance Committee, uh, we're going to explain this in a minute. I'm just going to read the way it's on the art on the warrant right now. To expend $5,449,117, also to appropriate the sum of $150,000 from the school undesignated fund for a total of $5,559,117 for fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2018, ending June 30th, 2019 from the school department's contributions to the total cost of funding public education from grades pre-kindergarten to grade 12. Everything under that is just information. It's not part of the article. Judy, you have a motion. I recommend that we accept the school committee's recommendation to expend $5,599,117 for Article 15. For a second. It's been moved and seconded to adopt Article 15 as recommended by the school committee. Now, Dr. Williams, there's, there's going to have some discussion here about this. Uh, the Warren Finance Committee does not disagree with the final sum. But what we wanted to do is to make sure that voters who are looking at this particular article realize that $150,000 of this was transferring from the school's undesignated fund into this total. Unfortunately, there was also a typo that was not that was not corrected. So it should be to expend five 
$1,449,117, and also to appropriate the sum of $150,000 from the school's undesignated fund for a total of, and here's the typo, the typo is, should be $5,599,117, which is the same total as the one that the school committee recommended. We want to make sure that voters realize that they have a right to approve or disapprove transferring their funds from undesignated to other funds. And so we wanted to put that in there so the voters would know that $150,000 of this came from the school's undesignated fund. Um, the Warren Finance Committee, I'd like to thank them and the school board as well for the uh, negotiations and, and discussions that we've had over the month of February and into March. It's hard to give a critique to a budget that's only 0.7% above last year's budget. However, 217,000 of this came from a windfall uh, for uh, expenditures from, from Augusta for student, um, help me out. No, the, uh, uh, the um, financial disadvantaged student fund, that's it. It gave us 217,000. This is a windfall. Last year we didn't get any of that money, and the year before it was a lesser amount. The school worked very hard to get the data correct and showing us that there are social trends that are occurring in our town such that we're getting more students uh, from families that are having financial difficulties. I think this will probably be the last non-controversial school budget that is going to be around for a long time because I think that in the future uh, there's going to be a tug between making sure that the uh, taxes aren't going up for people who can no longer afford to pay taxes on their property and at the same time the rights of teachers to have a good salary and good benefits as employees of our town. And we're going to have to do some changes in some of the ways that we process this. Number one being being much more transparent and making sure that the negotiations that are taking place with the school board members and the various unions occur every three years. And so bargaining uh, is done only once every three years. Uh, I would urge teachers to, to certainly think about having them annually because I think inflation is going to be a problem in the future, but be this as it may, the Board of Selectmen need to at least be, be aware of what's going on. Uh, they need a report from the school board after the negotiations and the bargaining negotiations are finished. They need to let us voters know exactly what was what transpired. Uh, the town's going to have to be more transparent because they are, there are going to be conflicts throughout this whole process in the future between taxpayers who don't want to pay any more taxes, many of whom are on Social Security and fixed income, and teachers who have a right to ask for certain salary increases and certain benefit increases. They certainly have a right to do so. Additional comments or questions? Tom Gore. Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator. If you look down on the recommendations, underneath the recommendations in Article 15, you will see a line that said, add school undesignated funds, and across that is $150,000. If you go back and look at Article 14, you'll also find that included in the calculation there. The total, um, the total here includes that $150,000. The problem is that $150,000 now resides in the undesignated fund balance. The selectmen do not have authorization to move funds from the undesignated fund balance to become designated without a vote of the town meeting. That's why the warrant finance recommendation is as it appears, and it shows that $150,000 using the term appropriate. So what's going to happen here is, I believe, if this passes based on the school committee recommendation as opposed to warrant finance committee corrected recommendation, that the school committee is going to have to come back and get the authorization of town meeting. And I assume from what I'm hearing that they propose to do that at the annual town meeting. Is that what I'm understanding? I don't know. But right now, that $150,000, they can show it over here because what's down here is not part of the article, but it hasn't been appropriated, so the selectmen have no authority to move that 
along those lines. Additional mm -hmm. questions or comments on Article 14? Yes, sir. Yes, um, I respectfully disagree. So in regards to the appropriation, if you look at the article that was recently just voted in, Article 14, um, when you look at the, it's Article 14 that does the raising and appropriation. Article 15 does the expenditures. So if you look at Article 14, which was to see what some municipality will raise and appropriate, in the explanation you'll see that $150,000 has already been voted on to be appropriated. So if we were to follow the Warrant and Finance Committee's recommendation, we'd be appropriating it twice, which I would not recommend doing. So we've already appropriated $150,000, so now this article is about expending it. So again, I would recommend the school committee's recommendation. Okay, let's get uh, comments or questions from other folks, like the person behind here. Okay. Sarah, you have a question or comment? Uh, just a comment uh, in response to Dr. Williams, who uh, started out uh, speaking on behalf of Warren and Finance. Um, but I just wanted to make it clear that at one point he uh, turned into speculation as far as this being the last budget that we're not going to be debating or whatever the word was. I just wanted to make that clear that at some point in the middle there it turned to opinion and he was not speaking on behalf of all of us at Warren Finance. Thank you. Other comments or questions? Mary. I've been on negotiating team for a long time, many, many years, many negotiations. We actually had a one-year contract one time because I think the... <laughs> At that point, uh, gas was going up to $4 a gallon, and we said, oh my gosh, we better just do this for one year to see what's going to happen with the economy. So we don't always do three years. Three years um, is the maximum we can do. I would like to do five, because every time we go into negotiations, we have to hire lawyers, and that's an extra cost, and I don't like that. Um, and I don't understand the comment, I'm sorry, but I just don't understand the comment about transparency because I feel we can't be any more transparent. We have every line item in a book that everyone can read and you can see exactly where the money's going. If you don't like it, you could have came to one of the 15 meetings we had, I feel maybe it was 10, but it was a lot of meetings. And you can always come and give us your comments there. Time for it. Additional comments or questions? We are in Article 15. Just responding to Kevin. Kevin, uh, ideally, the amendment would have been made during the Warren Finance Committee to Article 14, but specifically the problem is giving the selectmen the authority to move funds from the undesignated fund balance. Fine to appropriate this, but when you appropriate, you've got to say where it's coming from. And this description down here is not part of the article. That question was raised at Warren Finance Committee hearings specifically to find out. So. Okay. There's no comments or questions. Dr. Williams. As far as the transparency is concerned, the bargaining negotiations are carried out, right, at least right now, every three years, which means from uh, next year until 2022. When you have those data put into each year's budget, it becomes very, very difficult to make modifications in that because then they have to go ahead and uh, send notice to the other side in 120 days to have a, a reconvening to look to renegotiate or to re, uh, re a bargain negotiate with the uh, with the other side as far as monies are concerned it makes it very difficult I, I said transparency because so far as I know the school board does not send a report on the final negotiations to the board of selectmen perhaps they do and if so I apologize for getting wrong fake information I mean, certainly the board of selectmen normally does not tell us the results of the bargaining negotiations that occur and even so the bargaining association negotiations are in fact uh, accountable for about 70 percent of the budget so i think it's very important that voters know of what was said what was bargained for and over what period of time thank you additional comments or questions at least I just want to make it clear or just clarify there are um, school committee members that are in the negotiations and these school committee members are elected by the town board so we as a town have trusted their judgments in these negotiations and find them well and capable of doing a well job during those negotiations am i correct okay and then i'll ask to move the question the, uh, wait, 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 you, you made a motion to move the question, so that, that requires a two-thirds vote, so we're just going to end debate if in fact this passes, so the question is, do we want to stop debate and vote on this, 
All those in favor of stopping debate, please raise your yellow cards. Make your hands down. Those opposed? Clearly, we have two thirds of those in the room. So we're now going to the motion on Article 15 is to adopt the school committee's recommendation. All those in favor of that motion, please raise your yellow cards. Thank you. Hands down. Those opposed? Article 15 is adopted as recommended by the school committee. Article 16. Okay, Article 16. Shall the school committee be authorized to expend such other sums as may be received from federal or state grants or programs or other sources during the fiscal year for school purposes, provided that such grants, programs, or other sources do not require the expenditure of other funds not previously appropriated? The school committee recommends to authorize the expenditure of grants and other funds as per Article 16. Or Finance Committee uh, recommends the same. Is there a motion on Article 16? Judy. I make a motion that we accept the school committee's recommendation for Article 16. Second. It's been moved and seconded to adopt Article 16 as recommended by the school committee. Are there questions or comments on Article 16? See none. The motion is to adopt Article 16 as recommended by the school committee. All those in favor of the motion, please raise your cards. Thank you. Hands down. Those opposed. Article 16 is adopted as recommended by the school committee. Article 17. See if the town of Acton will appropriate the receipt of certain federal and state grants and carry any previous balances for the following special revenue accounts. And I think in this case, since it identifies the accounts, that it is part of the article. Uh, Title 1A, Small Rural School, Title 4, Title 2A, Local Entitlement Preschool, efficiency based learning. School committee recommends to appropriate receipt of federal and state grants grant funds as per Article 17. Board Finance Committee recommends the same. Judy, is there a motion? I make a motion that we accept the school committee's recommendation for Article 17. It's been moved and seconded to adopt Article 17 as recommended by the school committee. Are there questions or comments on Article 17? Seeing none, the motion is to adopt Article 17 as recommended by the school committee. All those in favor of the motion, please raise your cards. Thank you. Hands down. Those opposed? Article 17 is adopted as recommended by the school committee. Article 18. See if the town of Acton will vote to appropriate the following revenues, balances carried, and fund transfers to fund the food service budget in addition to the amount raised by taxation for food services in the school operating budget. School nutrition revenues are $80,000. School committee recommends to appropriate revenues to fund the nutrition budget as per Article 18. Or finance fee committee recommendation is the same. Is there a motion on Article 18? Judy. Make a motion that we accept the school committee's recommendation for Article 18. The move and seconded to adopt Article 18 is recommended by the school committee. Are there questions or comments on Article 18? See none. The motion is to adopt Article 18 is recommended by the school committee. All those in favor of the motion, please raise your cards. Thank you. Hands down. Those opposed. Article 18 is adopted as recommended by the school committee. Article 19, to authorize the transfer to and expenditures from the Capital Improvement Reserve Fund. So Article 19 is as follows. To see what some of the town of Acton will vote to transfer funds, unexpended, excuse me, transfer funds from unexpended funds to the designated Capital Improvement Reserve Account and to expend funds from that reserve account. This account is used for purposes of paving the parking lots and sidewalks. School committee recommends the transfer of $15,000 from the school undesignated funds to the school designated capital improvement reserve account. Board finance committee recommends the same. Is there a motion, Judy? Make a motion we accept the school committee's recommendation for Article 19. Second. It's a move and seconded to adopt the school committee's recommendation for Article 19. Are there questions or comments? Tom Gore. Thank you. Just so you folks know that reserve accounts is defined by the school's attorney at this point in time never appear on the warrant again unless they want to add funds to them. The school committee carries these year to year to year and can expend at their sole discretion. Okay, this is according to the school department's attorney. That having been said, 
It's out of sight without me once it's deposited in that reserve account. Right now, there is approximately a total of two hundred thousand dollars, just under two hundred thousand dollars in reserve accounts at the school. This is money that you've been overtaxed, okay? And it should be in your pockets, but it's not. It's in a bank account for the school, so that they can spend it when and how they choose. Your decision, but it's not good business. And I'll go into that a little bit. Uh, there are two capital accounts, capital reserve accounts, amongst these, amongst this two hundred thousand dollars, and they currently have in them forty-five thousand seven hundred thirty-eight dollars and some cents. Okay, the estimated cost to pay in the parking lot is forty-five thousand dollars, as I understand it from our discussion at uh, at Warren Finance. Why are we going to add money to this? This money can come back to the town to reduce taxes. They've got the money already to pay the parking lot. Hey, buddy, you don't need to move anymore from the undesignated fund and designated. That money can go back to the people where it was supposed to go three years ago. Additional comments or questions on Article 19? Judy. Well, the school committee has a long-range planning committee where we look ahead to what projects we want to do over, over a period of time to maintain the building and the grounds. And we just believe it's really good uh, business to set aside a certain amount of money each year for this project that's going to cost around $60,000 for the paving. Um, so we're asking for $15,000 this year and we'll be asking for another $15,000 next year so that we can build up that account for the paving and replacing the sidewalks, which haven't been done for many, many years. And I just kind of like to respond to what Mr. Gore uh, mentioned about the reserve funds. The Atkins School Department's reserve funds were legally established by the voters at the school budget meeting or the school town meeting in 2015. Legal opinions concerning the wording of the articles at that time were obtained from the school's legal counsel, which is Drummond and Whitsum, also from the town of Acton legal counsel, which is Burke and Clegg, and the auditing firm for the town of Acton and Acton School Department, which is R.H. Smith. There is no reason <coughs> whatsoever <coughs> to assume that the reserve funds, as approved by the town meeting in 2015, were to be lapsing funds. In fact, the idea that the Acton citizens voted for these, voted them in for a single year, would be absurd because the purpose for creating the funds was to give the school committee and administration the ability to budget more accurately in future budgeting years. It's because of these reserve funds that we have been able to present budgets to the town for 2016-17, 2017-18, and now 2019 with very minimal increases and little to no impact on the tax base for our acting citizens. If they were to be considered lapsing at the main department of education, would have had reason to penalize our school department for budgeting in excess of the percentage which is identified in school law and also in our own finance policy. In further legal opinions that the Act and School Committee received last month when this came up with Warren Finance uh, in 2018, Drummond and Woodson stated, the Department of Education is in agreement that while specific reserve funds are listed under Title 28, reserve funds are not exclusive only to those that are listed. It was also confirmed that county, municipal, and many school departments regularly utilize specific reserve funds for unexpected expenditures that would cause a department to exceed its operating budget. The Atkins School Reserve Funds established in 2015 are under Title 20A, and according to legal counsel, the actual legal reference is not required to be a part of the written article. They are each very specifically to be used only for the purpose for which they were created, and they were created to be non-lapsing funds which remain as a safety net for unexpended operating budgets expenses in any given year. The authority for the school committee to use these funds if and when necessary was also clearly granted in the wording of the articles in the school department warrant of 2015 and approved by the voters. With all due respect to Mr. Gore's research concerning the legality of the Acton School Department's 
designated reserve funds, the school committee continues to rest on the opinions of legal counsel for the school department, legal counsel for the town of Acton, and the expertise of the school and town auditing firm. I have a folder here that has legal opinions in it, contains several legal opinions as well as the warrant of 2015, and I would be more than happy to share that information with anybody who would like to look at it. Um, so I, I guess we would respectfully submit that perhaps Mr. Gore's findings also are not without doubt. Thank you. Additional comments right there, right there, John. Paul, what is what's that Paul talking? Um, one could argue that um, any general ledger account could contain, could have unexpended funds in it. Um, I think we understand what this is intended to do, but I, I question, um, and, I, and I see that the, the motion talks about undesignated funds as being the source of a transfer. Um, but I'm just wondering if the phrase unexpended funds in the article itself, uh, in place of what I presume that should be undesignated funds, uh, if that is problematic. Thank you. Additional comments or questions on Article 19? Tom. Uh, thank you for reading the latest from Drummond and Woodson. These are the same folks who, oh, I'm sorry, not, okay. Oh, no, you included some, some of their, some of their words. These are the same folks who wrote in their last letter that one finance has seen that this opinion is not without doubt. Again, legal shorthand for there is reason to consider this opinion incorrect. I'll stand on that. And, and with respect to the town's attorney, uh, the town uh, actually advised the selectman on this issue back in 215, and they advised the the selectmen to enable these accounts under Title 30A, not 20A, because Title 20A has no provision for contingency accounts of which some of these are. Title 30A does. Okay. So, additional comments or questions? Yes, sir. As a taxpayer, <coughs> okay. and having lived here for 13 years, I'm probably still considered a newcomer. <coughs> But I think it's time that school board, since the cost of repairing the paving is only going to get more expensive, if in fact you have this money sitting in an account, you have enough money to do the job if you pull the money out of several places. I think it's time that somebody talk to somebody who knows what the hell they're talking about and get the money and do the job now because next year it will only be probably 20 cents percent more and the year after it'll be another 10 percent more so if this money is sitting somewhere and it's legally that you can take it out and spend it let's do it and get it over with okay we show comments or questions mary five minutes um when we made up these reserve we have one for tuition. Uh, if we had all of a sudden five high schoolers come to town and we didn't budget for those extra five, we can go to that account and pull it out. Um, we have a professional services reserve account. This is used to cover legal fees. Say we got into a big legal problem. We didn't budget for that. We pulled it out of that reserve account. I could go down, but it's all, you know, health reserve. If all of a sudden our health rates went further up than we had budgeted for, because we normally don't have those numbers before the budget's ready. And if that number comes up, you know, we budgeted 5% and it's 15%, we can pull from that. Um, so, you know, we have a security and safety upgrade. Um, you know, there's no, those are the only, you know, way we can pull something out. It, there's nothing that says paving. So 
This is $15,000, hopefully over a five-year period, where we can put it in the bank account and then pay cash, not have to take out loans and pay interest, and we're just trying to do fiscal responsibility at the school committee level. Additional comments or questions on Article 19? Yes, ma'am. As a, as a taxpayer and a, a business person, I like the idea of having a long-term plan and being able to save the money in advance so that if something unexpected does come up, you don't have to come back to the taxpayers and, and ask for additional funds at that time. Um, so, you know, as a person in town who contributes to the, the tax base, I really like the idea of having this long-term plan and keeping reserve funds in case the unexpected does come up. Thank you. Additional comments or questions? Dr. Williams. I'd just like to say again, the budget is very good this year because it was only 0.7% above last year. But that was because we got a one-time windfall of $217,000 from uh, Augusta for economic disadvantaged students. Uh, if we had not gotten that, as last year we didn't get it, we got a smaller amount the year before that, but we cannot depend on it. If we had not gotten that, I can only assume that our budget would have been $200,000 in the red, unless they were going to pull money from some of these other reserve accounts. Thank you. Additional comments or questions? <clears throat> Judy. Just one more thing. Um, we, if we took all, to, to go back to what Tom says, if we emptied our um, capital reserve fund, all for the purpose of repaving, then we would not have a capital reserve fund to take care of things like when our water pump goes or when our heater goes or when something else <clears throat> major goes around that that reserve fund is set up for. So it's just a matter of trying to do good budgeting um, and planning ahead. Other questions or comments on Article 19, Tom? <laughs> I'd only make one observation. You need one contingency account because never are we going to get to the year where you have five or six or seven contingencies all occurring in the same year. One contingency account will cover virtually all possibilities, and that can be a lot smaller number than the two hundred thousand dollars that you have right now. That's, and I agree with you that you should have a reserve. I'm concerned about the structure of these and the need for taking all this money from the taxpayers and just leaving it sitting in the back. Remember, folks, that the town can borrow at half the rate you can, okay? But when it saves that money, it has to save it in a very, very safe place, which means it can't put it at risk. If it's in your pocket and you choose, you can put it at risk and you can make money with that money, all right? So the town can borrow very cheaply, half as cheap as you can, and the flip side is that if I borrow money, I have to pay a reasonably high rate, but I can also put that money to work, okay? It's actually costing the taxpayers back to have money sitting in a bank. We're much smarter, but much better off, actually, if we borrow. And whether the town wants to operate that way, that's the way we used to operate years ago. We'd always borrow what are called tax anticipation notes, and we'd pay them back at the end of the year. If you actually sit down and work the numbers out, everybody comes out ahead if you operate on the principle of borrowing money when you need it to meet a contingency. Additional comments or questions on Article 19? Are we ready to move the question? Well, I, unless you have something else to say. Okay, the motion on Article 19 is to adopt the school committee's recommendation. And just to remind everybody what that was, the motion to transfer $15,000 from school undesignated funds to the school's designated capital improvement reserve account. All those in favor of that motion, please raise your cards. Thank you, hands down. Those opposed? Article 19 is adopted as recommended by the school committee. Uh, I'm looking for a motion to adjourn. Judy? I make the motion we adjourn. The move and seconded that we adjourn. Thank you all for great attendance, for being patient.